All right, folks, directly out to your phone calls. Once again, we have Jeffrey in Sacramento. Oh, you're the uh, dad in the school board meetings protesting masks. Uh, Thanks for calling in, Jeffrey. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Thank you, Harrison. I appreciate you taking the time to address what's going on. Um, um, Yeah, I'm the dad. I went up on the school board, and I basically laid it out for him, and it kind of addresses what you were talking about earlier about this masculinity issue and the, the femininity and how it's being used. And I think what I really was trying to address was the fact that Women, you know, and the the left are trying to accuse our society of being too masculine or having too much mascul- toxic masculinity or whatnot. And what a lot of them don't realize is four out of five teachers are women. You know, there's right. there's all these children that are around these teachers all day long, and they're there in the pre morning, and they're they're there after school, and they're only being influenced by women. And then they go home, and there's no father. And I think it's the exact opposite of what they've been trying to say. It's, beta males in our society that are allowing these women to take control. And then no men are standing up to defend our country. You know, nobody's really doing what I was doing. And I just hope that I light a fire underneath some people's butts to get up and actually just realize that you don't got to write a speech or be well-spoken. You can just get up and speak from the gut and the heart and uh, express yourself and tell people what's going on. And I think that that resonates like what you're saying with little Wi-Fi beacon. Like I never expected my video to go viral. But what happened is, is people picked up on that, the resonance, what I was putting out, the vibration, the frequency. Right. And um, yeah, it really resonated with me. And I just wanted to say that I appreciate you touching on that. And uh, yeah, you're an awesome host. And just, yeah, thank you for bringing attention to what's going on and everybody being prosecuted with J6. I'm a proud boy as well. And a lot of my brothers are um, in jail right now and being prosecuted and persecuted without any legal representation. And uh, just thank you for bringing that to the light. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I I think you have sort of hit the nail on the head here. I think that's the term I was looking for earlier in the show. And I was trying to describe, you know, our government dealing with the Russian government and, you know, how just everyone in our upper echelons now just has this like bitchy attitude. I think it's toxic femininity. I think that's what it is. I think we've we've dealt with the toxic masculinity. Unfortunately, the positive masculinity also got thrown out like a baby with the bathwater. But now we're it's been replaced by this toxic femininity, which try which is is just like this I don't know. It's like aggressive weakness. I don't I don't know what it is. But you know, you're exactly right. I mean masculinity is a good thing. When you're being attacked by a bear, it's a good thing when you're going to war. It's a good thing when you're trying to be scammed or, or some sort of other, you know, offensive attack against you. You want masculinity to stand up against it. You don't want just to, we, we are we are this feminized culture. And I think that's really is at the heart of it. And it's so pervasive and and. You know, where the, the cancer has spread so much at this point, that's just like all of the upper echelons are just ruled by these very feminized, like weak sort of people. And the other countries are not run by those types of people. And so they're running roughshod over us and absolutely destroying us. And our response is just to like snap in their face. And it's just like, okay, but the tanks are rolling in. So like your attitude doesn't matter now anymore. Like when Kamala Harris gets up and tries to, tries to act like she's in charge and uh, the, the consequences are going to be extremely dire. It's just like, just shut up, just shut up. We, we don't well, every, care. Every movie you see too, it's every star, everybody that's a protagonist in the movie now is some half shaved head feminist lesbian type who's maybe a person of color. There is no more strong man that comes in to save a woman. I mean, they're trying to change James Bond into a transgender black. Superman is going to be a homosexual. Spider-Man is bi. I mean, there's no masculine figures anymore. And that's kind of what's scary is these children don't know what a good, strong, masculine man is like who can lead by example, but still treat women with respect. That's what they need to see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean— we, we've covered it before. The studies on testosterone show that low testosterone in things in people like, uh, you know, uh, uh, creatures like monkeys, the lower your testosterone is, the more aggressive you are and the more submissive you are. Kind of contradictory. They've also done studies that shows that your judgment is more likely to be a fair judgment the higher your, your testosterone is. So it's like this idea that testosterone or masculinity is somehow negative. It's actually extremely positive in almost every way. Aggression is not an aspect of testosterone or masculinity. Aggression is an aspect is a expression, a uh, overcompensation of weakness. Right? You don't need to be aggressive if you 
a real manly man, right? The, you think of the godfather, right? This <laughs> like powerful crime lord. Was he ever aggressive? No, he spoke very quietly and softly, right? That's masculinity yeah. as well. Yes, like the chihuahua that's barking really loud. Exactly. You don't want to look at the chihuahua and go, wow, he's barking really loud. He must have a lot of strength. It's like the guy yeah. who barks the loud. It's the quiet guy you're worried about, right? He stands there yeah. and looks at you as you're getting all crazy, and then he comes out of nowhere and handles business. Yeah, and and of course you can you can do the same thing that we were, we were talking about before with extrapolating out like where does this go? Like what happens when you have uh, you know a society full of people that are do not have any male role models? And the other thing is. Ask a woman what her fantasy is. Is it to go beat up a bunch of men or is it to be a damsel in distress <laughs> with a big muscly hero kicks down the door and throws you yeah. over his shoulder? The women want manly men too, but this is where you extrapolate to, right? It Again, just like transgender, it's the destruction of what is innate and natural and like life-giving, right? The idea of, uh, you, know, you know, women being the submissive gender, it's not something that, that uh, uh, you know, our community came up with. That's not a societal thing that's that's put down on women. It's a fact of of nature, and it's not something that needs to be corrected. And that's what they're that's what they're trying to do. And yeah, as you point out, you know, it's like toxic masculinity. Now we're going to have a bunch of women, you know, shooting guns and beating people up. It's like, all right, this makes no sense. It's about the disruption of reality itself. Brilliant call. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. And thank you so much for uh, for standing up for what is right and speaking your mind. Uh, really, really powerful stuff. And uh, I, I'd ask you to call in again, please. I'd like to hear from you another time. But now I want to go out to another